The next hook I want to show you allows us to interact with the input components imperatively, which means not by passing some state to it that then changes something in the component, but by calling uh, a function inside of a component, for example, which is something you won't need to do often and you shouldn't do often because it's not the typical React pattern you want, but sometimes it is helpful. Now it will become clearer what I mean in a second. First of all, let's remove this disabled prop from the button. I don't want to disable the button. It should always be clickable now. Second, in the submit handler, since the button is now always clickable, I want to check if the form is valid and only if it is, I will call all uh, on login. Otherwise, and that's now the interesting part, I want to basically focus the first invalid input I find. So here it's now always submittable. And if I click on login, I now want to make sure that we actually focus the first input that is invalid. So in this case that we put the cursor into the email input here. That's something you might want. So for that, I'll actually turn this into an else if statement and check if the form is valid because the email is not valid, hence the exclamation mark at the beginning, or else if the email should be valid, it has to be the password that is invalid, then uh, we'll go into this block. Of course, both could be invalid, but again, I wanna focus the first one, which is invalid, and the first input we have that could be invalid is the email, hence I'm checking this first. But now the goal is to focus the, the input. And for a regular input, that would be possible by putting a ref on it. We learned about refs already in this course with the use ref hook. And then we could call the focus method. Just to show this to you, here in the input component, where we have the, the native input, the raw input HTML component, we could use the use ref hook here to create an input ref like this. And then for example, if we would want to focus this after the component was rendered, we could use, use a fact to run some code after the component was rendered. You learned that the function you pass to use a fact runs after every component render cycle. Let's say we only want to run it once when the component initially renders, hence I pass an empty array as a dependency array so that this only runs after the first time this component was executed and rendered. And then here, we could focus the input by adding the ref prop to the input. The ref prop is supported on all built-in HTML components, like input, for example. Point at input ref, and in use effect, we could now use input ref dot current dot focus. And the focus method is a method that is available on the input DOM object to which we got access through this ref. So here we're just using refs. As you learned them earlier in the course already, we connected our ref to the input, and then we use use effect to focus this input after this component rendered. And as a result, since the input will render for both the email and the password, this will focus the password input because that's the second and therefore last input that's being rendered. Hence, if this reloads, you see the first one is marked as invalid because it was temporarily focused, but then the password is the input that stays focused at the end. Now that's not the behavior we want, but that's something we can do with references and the built-in functionalities we have in React and simply in vanilla JavaScript. Focus is a method that's not coming from React, but that's built into JavaScript built into the DOM objects, the input DOM object specifically you're dealing with. Now again, my goal is not to do that after the input is rendered though, so we can remove use effect. My goal is that I, for example, have my own method here in the input component. Let's say it's called activate. You could also call it focus, of course. And in there, I want to use the input ref, current, and focus my input. But now the goal is that activate is a function that's not called from inside the input, but from outside. Now I'll say it again, this is a rare scenario because typically you don't want to code your React projects like this. Instead, you want to work with props and state and pass data down to a component to then change something there. 
But in rare cases, like in this example, it might also be an elegant way of, well, focusing this input here, if you could call focus or activate on your input component. So that you essentially can use your input component as you can use the built-in one. Because there you have a focus method as well, right? So maybe you want one, or in our case, an activate function on your own input component as well. So a rare use case, but you could face it at some point. Now, of course, you could think, well, that shouldn't be too hard. We go to the login component where we have our inputs and we simply use use ref here as well. Use ref like this, import the use ref hook. And then in your login component, you create your email input ref, for example, by calling use ref and you create your password input ref by calling use ref whoops, use ref, so that you have two references, one for the email and one for the password input. And then we simply go down and we add the ref prop here on the first input and point at the email input ref. And for the password, we also add ref and point at the password input ref. Could be as easy as that. Now, therefore, we have a reference to our own components now one reference to our input component for the email and one reference to the input component for the password. And therefore, in the submit handler, if the email is valid, we can, uh, is invalid, excuse me, if the email is invalid, we can use the email input ref, current, and call activate, which is that function we have in our input. And uh, we do the same basically in the else block, but for the password input ref, right? This is something you might want to do. Well, if we try this, it will not work though. If I save this, you already see an error here. Function components cannot be given refs. So this will not work. We uh, can't use a ref here. This is not possible. And, um, our component, the input component, of course, also doesn't really do anything with a ref prop internally. It doesn't accept a ref prop on its props object. We're not using props dot ref anywhere in there. But even if we do, ref is also kind of a reserved word. And yeah, we're getting this warning here for a reason. So this is not an approach that works like this. However, we can make it work. We just need to do two things. For one, in the input component, we need to import another hook, and that's the use imperative handle hook. Has a strange name, but in the end, it is a hook that allows us to use this component or functionalities from inside this component imperatively, which simply means not through the regular state props management, not by controlling the component through state in the parent component, but instead by directly calling or manipulating something in the component programmatically. And again, that is something you rarely want to use and therefore you shouldn't use it very often in your projects as well. You want to find an alternative. Nonetheless, here, it actually is a pretty nice solution for this problem. And all we need to do is we need to call use imperative handle here and pass two things to it. Let's start with the second thing before I talk about the first parameter. The second parameter is a function a function that should return an object. And that object will contain all the data you will be able to use from outside. So for example, here, we could add a activate field or a focus field, totally up to you. And then point at the internal function or the internal variable or whatever it is that should be accessible from outside through that name. For example, here, point at activate. And again, this doesn't have to be focused. This can be, this can be activate or anything else as well. I'm just using different names here to make it clear that this activate refers to this function and that is the externally available name then. So this is basically a translation object between internal functionalities and the outside world. So the parent component. Now this alone doesn't do the trick though. We also have this first argument which we need to provide to use imperative handle. And that's actually something we also get here in our component function argument list. 
Thus far, we always just worked with props. And in 99.9% .9 of cases, that is all you will need. However, there technically also is a second argument you can accept. And that's a ref. Now that's interesting. That is a ref if a ref should be set from outside. We'll also need something else to make sure that this can be set, but this is then available. So if now the parent component, the login component, adds the ref prop and binds this to something, essentially this here will establish the connection. This will be part of allowing this binding. And it's this ref which we should pass to use imperative handle. Now we're still not there yet. This alone would not work. In order to enable this second argument here, we need to export our component function in a special way. We need to wrap it with something special. And that's coming from React and it's called forward ref. And that is basically a function which we execute, a method which we execute to which we pass our component function. So our component function is now the first argument to forward ref. And forward ref returns a React component, so input still is a React component, but a React component that is capable of being bound to a ref. Now since I wrap forward ref here, I of course also need a closing bracket here. And now with that input is able to take a ref prop and it will expose a ref and it is controllable or usable with refs. But the only thing you will be able to use is what you expose here through use imperative handle. So for example, here I'm exposing this focus function, a function because it points at the activate function. So now in the login component, we can call email input ref .current .focus because that's the external name we set up. And with that, we can save this. And if I now click login, you see the email is selected, the first invalid input. If I enter something valid here and I click login, you see the password is now selected because it's uh, invalid. The same here, if I click out of it, but it's invalid, it is selected. And I can of course also still log in if everything is valid. So that is a niche use case, but especially for something like focusing inputs and so on, this can be very useful. So this is a very realistic use case, which I'm showing to you here. With use imperative handle and forward ref, you can expose functionalities from a React component to its parent component to then use your component in the parent component through refs and trigger certain functionalities. That is something you can do and that does not just work for functions. We could also expose the value here through refs if we wanted to. So that is something you can do, not something you will need all the time and you should avoid it at all cost, I would almost say. But especially in cases like this with focusing, but also in some other use cases like with scrolling and so on, this can be very useful. And then triggering something like this programmatically is fine. And with use imperative handle and forward ref, you are able to make it work.